was it in particular for the producers that drew you to Allison's work? What stood out to you? Oh, she's such an incredible writer. She's so funny. And her other two films were so honest and heartfelt, but also so funny that I just knew that I begged her to let me on. <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> a dream, a dream. Yeah. Says, what is the biggest difficulty you overcame when filming this short film? The biggest difficulty? I think the time, the time period, because um, we were really on it in terms of setting something in 2009. We had this amazing production designer, B.B. Patman, and we had like blackberries, we had like makeup from the time and all of that. But I remember one particular scene where we were shooting and it was actually quite like a poignant scene between Bissola and her mom. And our actor is like, oh, I've got my Apple Watch on. And it's just little things like that where you're really, um, in such a short amount of time, you have to fully immerse yourself in the time period. And that wouldn't have existed. And if we had kept that in and shot that, we would have had to do really expensive, like, paint jobs and stuff like that. So I think um, you have to be super on it with, with things. Just really trying Well, to I would say the biggest challenge was trying to figure out the specific angle that I was going to tell the story because there's so many sides of a logo. There's so much to be said, so much to be covered. So to try and focus in and make a short that's 18 minutes long was the biggest challenge because they're so magnificent. I think as it's an animated short, so with uh, animation usually kind of the, the way you work is a bit um, tricky because you plan everything ahead. You know, for example, with live action, you can film everything and then you edit it all together. So I think the trickiest part is to actually plan everything ahead and make sure it also works. Awesome. <laughs> I would say for me, as an artist myself, I had to relinquish control to Alex and say, this is your artistry. Um, and that was a really beautiful experience for me to be the subject because I think so often I'm just making art about myself. So I had to kind of distance myself from it. Which, by the way, Alok did completely. The way that you were so hands-off and just said, this is your art project and you're going to do it. It was really, really incredible. Because I know as an artist myself, I always want to get in there and try and tinker. And you were so generous and loving. Sure. Yeah. I think it wouldn't have made sense for me to do this unless I trusted Alex before. I think there's a long history of stories like mine being sensationalized or exploited. So it's really important for me to have that trust before the camera is even turned on. But I'll just put on the record, there are very few people I would do that for, so. <laughs> well, I think that we live in a time more than ever where people feel this need to like fluff themselves up and seem very impressive, um, you know, because of social media. Uh, so I think that, you know, a younger generation probably feels that pressure more than my generation or an older one. Yeah. So I think just seeing a character come to grips with like, I can be okay with my real self. Honestly, I was, you know, just a cameo in the film. And so I don't feel like I was challenged making this or being a part of it, but I do think emotionally I was challenged because I'm working with these incredible artists who are so fully themselves and so present in their work that it made me want to be more present in my everyday life and in what I make. So I just, I think that the people around me challenged me in the best way. Do you have any like tips for students trying to get into the film industry? Just meeting people. I still work, one of our VFX supervisors was someone I went to film school with. Um, and it's just meeting as many people as you can and talking to as many people and trying to find out what they're interested in. Um, and hopefully you find connection through that. We're all in this industry because we love movies and there's a commonality there and you can always find good people to talk to and connect with. Go and then take those people and make things with them. Yeah. 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 Because the more, the more every time you make, a, every time you do a project, you're going to learn something, you're going to yeah. make new friends, you're going to meet new people. You're gonna learn about a new piece of equipment or right. yeah. a new DP that you like. or You get better on everyone. Yeah. So yeah. just yeah. keep making things as much as you can. If you have a friend who has a camera, go shoot something. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, I yeah. came up with a time where like, there wasn't <laughs> cell phones as much and I was 
directors are so revered, I didn't think we could ever do it. Right. And then, but now I feel like content is being created all the time. But yeah, just make stuff. And the more you make, the better you get. Yeah. Use TikTok as a platform to put stuff out there and try, you know, just throw stuff at the wall, see what sticks. I think that we sometimes can feel a little cringe or feel like shameful about putting something out there that's not like blockbuster ready. But I say like, we got to workshop it and use what we've got. And right now, if that's our iPhone or, you know, just posting it to our account, like that's major. So I say just like throw it out there. 